So today I'm going to be modeling this uh, sci-fi grenade case based on a tutorial by Alex Senechal. Um, it's a great opportunity to show off some new features I added in the last couple of weeks. Let's get started. I'm going to create a box centered at the origin. And then uh, to, get the, to get the shape right, I'm going to go into edge mode. We're going to select the side edges um, and then do a chamfer uh, to just get a good shape. Next, we want to carve the lid off the face. So by selecting a face and hitting space, uh, I go into planar mode to make a sketch. And with this line, I can make a cut by hitting C and right click to confirm. And we're going to add some more chamfers just to get a bit more of a dramatic shape. We start with a 45 degree chamfer, and then I can tweak the angle. But uh, I can also use these uh, fields to do something a bit more dramatic. And that looks good. And now we can add some fillets. And uh, yeah, that seems reasonable. Although I think uh, the middle fillets, um, they need to be bigger. So we can redo fillets. The geometry kernel is quite powerful. Something really wide like that would be nice. Looks good. So now let's make a handle. If the body is selected and we make a box, it'll automatically be a Boolean cutter. That's what I'm doing here. We're going to add our basic fillets on, in the middle and on the sides. Uh, that looks fine. And then the proportions are off. We'll just uh, tweak that a bit. Um, great direct modeling features in the geometry kernel. And now I'm going to show off a new feature. Uh, you can now fill it multiple bodies at once, because you'll note that the, that the lid and the body of the case are two different solids. So you can simultaneously fill it multiple things now. Um, let's just fill it the top and bottom of the case. And uh, it doesn't really matter that this isn't symmetrical, because we're just going to mirror it um, and make it symmetrical. So let me show how that's done. Alt-X will bring up the mirror gizmo on the origin. So I just mirrored the right side to the left. And then we're going to mirror this four side to the aft or whatever. And then I'm going to hit QQ to, to join them together. Now let's make a cut in the base of this. And again, it doesn't matter if it's symmetrical or not, because we're just going to mirror this from left to right. Um, so with a simple Boolean cut, I'll delete that line. We'll make a little indent. And then we'll join these back together. QQ. And just to make the shape more interesting, we're going to rotate this face. It's a little bit too much. OK, whoops. Uh, and then let's add our basic fillets, one in the corner. And then um, afterwards, yeah, two little here. OK, looks good. I think so. We need some more basic fillets, I guess, but let's start decorating this a bit. A new feature is the slot feature. So you can now draw slots directly on the faces of objects. Um, I want to make a fancier gizmo for this, but for now, you can just sort of tweak a lot of settings in the dialog box to get different angles and, and whatnot. But that looks reasonable. Um, I'm going to now make another cut uh, in the case with, again, with the body selected. Um, if I draw a box here, it's automatically going to be a cutter. Um, so I'm holding shift to lock onto the face plane. And we just made that little cut. We do our little fillets, uh, the corners, and then the front and the back. Looks fine, fine. And uh, that looks good. Uh, now I'm going to do another decoration. I'm going to show off some sketching features. I want this line to line up to that. So I hit Shift, and it'll add new snap points. Now I'll do the same thing here. Shift, which, uh, yes, exactly. And uh, I'll make this into a little Boolean cut. Uh, let me delete this curve. And then we'll add our basic fillets, nothing super fancy. Okay, yes, that's fine. Yeah, okay, good. Um, 
Yeah, it looks good. Let's um, mirror this back from the right to the left. Um, union it together. Um, I'm going to add another slot right here. And we'll tweak it to be a little bit thinner, I guess. Uh, and the angle a bit too. Yeah, sounds good. Once more, let's mirror it. And let's get it on the other side too. So union it, and then we'll mirror, yes, left to right. Looks good. Now we're going to need like uh, uh, something on the top of the case. So uh, OK, this is not actually what I wanted to do. So I had the top selected, and so it defaulted as a Boolean cut. I do want to do a Boolean, but not quite like that. So let me. Let me make a sphere that's not going to be a Boolean, okay, right in the center, something really large. And I'm going to show off one of my favorite features of plasticity. So I'm moving this up along Z, but if I select the first and hit QW, it starts the Boolean difference command. And I can use the gizmo to move it into place so it's like a live Boolean. Awesome. I'm going to offset this curve just so I can make an interesting cut and we'll add some more fillets. Um, Voila, select this, C to cut, or sorry, select the curve, C to cut. Um, deleting the curve, and then we'll just add a couple fillets. Looks reasonable, and then I think um, I'll just uh, union these two objects together because they don't really need to be separate objects. Um, so we're going to need some feet now. So we can draw directly on the plane of the box. Um, and if I hold shift, I can lock it onto the plane of the face. Um, since the body's not selected, this is going to be a new body. It's not automatically booleaning. And so we're just going to add a little chamfer in the corner. Boop. And then I want to extrude this face, but I'm going to hit R to make it a new body instead of uh, it being booleaned on. And then um, uh, I... Uh, I uh, want to select uh, these edges. OK, this is not. OK, that's sort of a bug. And uh, the other corner, OK, yes, click, OK. All right, I want to get a bunch of fillets around these guys, um, although not those in the corner. Control click to deselect you. OK, now let's do some fillets. Okay. Looks reasonable, so let's union this together with the body uh, and then make the foot look like a rubber thing by making it have a big ass fillet, nice and buttery. Uh, and then we can tweak the proportions. Direct uh, editing is pretty great. Maybe some fillets there too. Um, and I feel like uh, we're, we're getting close. Uh, we need to... So let me add a little decoration on top. Um, I love using the polygon tool. Uh, let me try that again. Um, it starts as a pentagram, but if you use the mouse wheel, you can switch the number of sides. So I just made a little triangle. Seems nice. And then I'm going to select that region to extrude it and Boolean it into the top. Uh, it starts out as a difference, but if I hit Q, it's a union. Uh, and then I'm just going to fill it the sides. And what I want to do here, actually, is I'm going to show off the sort of asymmetrical fillets. So that's basically symmetrical. And then if I tweak distance 1, OK, you can see that the fillet became much wider on one side. Deleting the curve. Um, yeah, looks good. I think the only thing left is just uh, yeah, a couple last fillets and, um, and symmetry stuff. Uh, but that's the wrong side because we just lost the foot. OK, undo. Um, and then let me mirror from this, the right side, uh, after doing this fillet. And uh, that looks good. OK, so we'll do that half and then union it together. And then do the left half there. And now it should be perfectly symmetrical. Let's make the feet mirror on all four sides as well. Boop one and boop two, and we have a perfectly symmetrical object, I think. Yeah, looks pretty good. So, not the most sophisticated design in the world, but like it's a good demo of some of the new features of plasticity. So, thanks.